Hey everyone, uh, this is Adi Pordila with a brand new tutorial that's recorded exclusively for Web Design Tuts. Uh, now, I'm planning on making a tutorial series on how to create a corporate website from scratch in Photoshop. And today we're kicking off with the homepage, so let's get started. Uh, this is the end product. Uh, let me just scroll down here so you can see the entire page. Uh, it's just a basic uh, uh, kind of a corporate um, a web page and I'm gonna walk you through um, every single step so you can create this entire page uh, okay so um, let's start by creating a new document so go to file new um, now I like to work with uh, 1200 pixels by 1200 pixels as a starter uh, document. Since I have uh, a very big screen here, I can uh, uh, I can work with uh, these sizes. So uh, choose white as a background content. Uh, let's name this homepage screencast and click OK. All right, now let me just resize the window here a bit so um, uh, you'll see it. Okay, that's that's good enough. All right, so first of all, um, we need to uh, set some guides uh, so that we know what the margins for our web page web page uh, are. So to do that, we're going to work with 960 pixels width. Um, so. Uh, one easy way to do this is just grab the rectangle tool, drag the rectangle, that's 960 pixels wide. Uh, you can check out the width um, by um, looking at the info panel on the right side of the screen. And uh, once this is uh, complete, uh, we need to align it to the center. So to do that, press Command A or Control A if you're on a PC to select the canvas. And with that selected, and with our black layer selected, click on this icon right here. And it uh, aligns uh, the newly created rectangle to the center of the canvas. Uh, so what I do next is just grab and drag some uh, some guides. Okay, there we go. So you can delete that one. And let's save this as homepage screencast.psd. Okay, so now we have our surface to work with. Uh, that's 960 pixels uh, wide. Uh, okay, next, uh, next stop is the logo. And even though this is a placeholder logo, I'm, I'm still going to show you how to create it. So uh, let's start with uh, typing some text. Corpora. And this is Aller, 30 points, regular. And as for color, it has to be 3D, 3F, 4, 6. Okay, let's duplicate this by pressing Alt and Shift, and then left clicking and dragging. This is a very easy uh, way to duplicate an element. Uh, there, there are two ways you can do this. There's uh, the way I showed you, or uh, with the layer selected, you can press Command or Control J, and it's going to create uh, a duplicate layer on top of the original one. So you can grab that and move it uh, into position. Okay, so um, let's type in a business theme. Now for this I'm going to use Aller Light actually. Uh, regular 14 pixels or 14 points. And for color let's give it a lighter gray. Uh, so it's going to be 7F 82 8F. Okay, uh, let's move it up a bit. Something like this. And let's change the uh, letter spacing in the character panel here. So let's let's go with something big. Let's go with 50. And think a bit 
70, I think 60 is fine. Or maybe 65. Yeah, I'm gonna stick with 65. And that looks, um, that looks okay. Uh, okay, next part, grab the round rectangle tool and make a round rectangle uh, that's 50 by 50, like this. And the way you can do this is simply, let me show you that again, grab the tool and um, click and then press shift and drag so you get this uh, perfect square. If you don't hold shift, uh, you're gonna have uh, all kinds of uh, sizes. So uh, press shift and it's gonna snap back to um, a perfectly uh, square shape. So uh, get it back to 50 by 50 and align it with the text. Something like this should do the trick. Okay, uh, now we need to give it a um, gradient overlay and to do that uh, you can either uh, select the layer go to this button right here where it says effects add a layer style and choose gradient overlay from the drop-down list or uh, much easier you can just double click on the layer and it's gonna op open up the layer style dialog and from that simply go to gradient overlay and choose a gradient from your list. Now I have a pre-made here, uh, so I'm gonna select this one and I'm gonna just show you the colors really quick. So it's CEOC42 and this goes up to DFOC47. Okay, click OK and click OK again. Now the last part of the logo is um, is a C. Uh, let's make this white. Let's move it into position here. Let's make it a lot bigger. Use our for it. Okay. And actually I think I'm gonna use our display since it's much bolder. Uh, okay so just nudge it to the right. And make it just a little bigger, something like, something like this. I think that will work just fine. Okay. Um, so yeah, that's that's pretty much our logo. So um, let's rename some of these shapes. Um, let's call this base, and let's take all these and group them together into a new group called logo. And let's group this again into a group called top. Now I like to color code my groups so that I know exactly where I am and which uh, layer or group belongs to which section of the website. So um, I'm gonna set orange for top. Okay, let's grab this one and move it to the top right here. And that's our logo. So next we need to we need to draw. Um, the header part of the website. So to do that, um, grab the rectang uh, rectangular marquee tool and drag, just make a selection like this. Don't worry about the height right now, uh, just uh, make that selection. Um, so let's create a new layer. Let's call it base. Let's make it uh, the last layer in the group. And let's fill it with a color, with white, for example. We're going to give it a gradient overlay anyway, so it doesn't matter. Now, the width, uh, I'm sorry, the height of, uh, of the header is 130 pixels. So, Command T or Control T if you're on a PC uh, to enter free transform and then just um, resize this to 130 pixels height, like that. Okay, press enter to confirm. Uh, okay, next we need to add a gradient overlay. So double click the layer, go to gradient overlay and set the color 
first one should be E E F O F four, and that's a very light gray, and it goes up to white. So click OK, and we have our gradient. Uh, now, next thing that we need to do is add that kind of uh, grid pattern. And to show you what I'm talking about, let me just um, let me just show you the end product page, so you can see it. And let me just zoom in here a bit. Okay, so um, this is the grid I'm talking about. I'm not sure if you can actually see it in the video, but if you look at the uh, final image that um, um, on the final image on the uh, web design uh, website, you should be able to see it. So it's just a very faint um, grid pattern. So to do that, um, of course you can uh, go ahead and search for grid patterns on the web, but uh, it's very easy to create it. So let's go ahead and do that. Create a new document that's 10 by 10, 10 pixels by 10 pixels, transparent. And let's just bring this up here so we can um, zoom in. And to create a grid pattern, all you need to do is make a selection like this. So select um, one pixel from the bottom and then holding shift to add to a selection, select this uh, column here from the right side. Now, with this selection, simply press uh, Command and Backspace, Command or Control and Backspace to fill it with the background color. With, the, uh, with that part done, go to Edit, Define Pattern, and let's call it um, Grid pattern, grid pattern white. And I'm also going to do a black version of this uh, because uh, I'm going to need that uh, in a bit. So uh, with the same selection, press Alt and Backspace to fill it with black, which is the uh, foreground color. And repeat the, the previous step. Go to Edit, Define Pattern, and we're going to have Grid Pattern, Black. Okay. Uh, we can close this. We don't need it. So what I'm going to do now is uh, apply the, the pattern to this uh, shape right here. Now, the thing is, if we apply the pattern while having a gradient overlay or, or a color overlay, it won't work. So uh, the solution is to create a smart object out of the layer and then add the pattern overlay, okay, like this. So let's just scroll down and choose this one as our grid. Let's lower the opacity all the way down to about 3 or 4%. I'd actually say 2%. I'm not sure if you can see it in the video, but it's there. It's very faint. I'm going to keep it at 3%. Um, or actually 2. I'm going to, yeah, I'm going to keep it at 2%. And then just click OK. Let me just zoom in here so you can see what I'm talking about. So you see we have this uh, cool uh, grid. OK, let's just uh, zoom back. Okay, so let's select the logo and align it with our base like this. Now, if you're wondering what that pink line is, it's called Smart Guide. And to activate Smart Guides inside Photoshop, simply go to View, um, Show, and then select Smart Guides. Okay. Right, now if we uh, take a look at our finished product, we see that we have a, con a contact information section right here on the top. That kind of looks like a piece of paper that's floating on top of the uh, grid here. So let's go ahead and do that. Uh, grab the round rectangle tool. Um, create a rectangle that's 
50, 250 pixels in width. Let me check my notes real quick. Yes, 250 pixels. And give it a proper height like this. 160, let's say. Okay, that works. Uh, make it white. So white. Group it. Let's call it contact info. Uh, okay, so just bring it up, align it to that left side uh, guide. Just nudge it up a bit. Uh, okay. Uh, and let's call this paper. Now we need to add the shadow and a cool way to add the shadow um, is by duplicating the layer. Uh, let's call it shadow. Put it uh, under the paper layer. Fill it with black, let's say. And then go to filter, blur, Gaussian blur. It's going to ask you if you want to rasterize it. Click OK. And you can just play around with the radius here, depending on how uh, dramatic uh, you want the effect to be. Now I'm going to keep it uh, around 5, or maybe even 4. Yeah, around 4. So 4 pixels. Click OK. And what you got is... Uh, this uh, blurred kind of shadow. Now to make it look like uh, the paper is kind of floating uh, you need to modify the shadow a bit. To do that press command or control T to enter free transform and then right click and select warp. Uh, with that selected click these handles and drag them like this to remove some of that shadow. So I'm gonna Try to make this as symmetrical as possible. Get rid of these. So something like this. And then on the bottom, I'm going to drag this like so. And press enter once you're done. So as you can see, we have this kind of cool effect. And you can lower the opacity for the shadow a bit. Although, I don't think it's necessary, but you can play around with it until you get the, uh, the effect that you want. Okay, so the next part is to... Actually, hold on just a sec. Let me warp these in just a little more on the top there. There was a bit of uh, excess. And a bit here, and a bit here. Okay, I think we're good now. Okay, yeah, I like that. Uh, yeah, okay, so uh, let's go ahead and add some contact information. So, grab the text tool. We're gonna use Arial. Uh, 11 points. And let's just leave black for now as color. So, let's see, we have a phone. That's 1-800-CORP. Just bring this up so you can see it. And then you will have an email, which is, let's say, office at corpro.com. And we also have a social, um, social icon section where we'll, we're going to show some uh, Twitter and Facebook and RSS icons. So uh, this is the text. Um, let's change its line spacing. Uh, let's make it 15 pixels. I think that works. We can modify this later on if we um, think we need more space. Actually, let me just try it with 20 pixels. Yeah, 20 is fine. I think I'm going to save it like that. Okay, as for colors, let's see. For colors, uh, these first bits where it says phone, email, and follow us will have a very light color, which is 92, 97, and 9D. 
and go ahead and copy that. And do the same for email and the follow us text. Okay. Now office at corpora.com is a link, or it's gonna be a link, so it has to be um, kind of red. So let me see what that red color is. It's DD OC46. So that will be the color for uh, pretty much all the links on the website. Okay, now um, we need to add some uh, lines here to, uh, to separate the phone email and follow us section. So using the line tool, drag some lines like this. And then let's give these a nice color. I'm thinking something like this, just using the color picker, just picking up some a very faint color. Something like this, so it's E5, E7, EB. Click OK and duplicate that line by um, using Alt, Shift and clicking and dragging it. Okay, so those are the lines. And let's see if we can actually improve this a bit. Let's just move this down a notch like this. Okay, that's better. Now, move it to the right side just a bit because we need to add some arrows right here. So to create the arrows I'm going to use a very simple technique. So let's just zoom in. Grab the rectangular marquee tool and make a selection of one pixel in wide and in height. So with that selection create a new layer Call it arrow and fill it with black. So alt and backspace. And with that selected, simply just duplicate that pixel into something that looks like this. And grab all five uh, layers and press Command D or Control E to merge all of them and rename it to arrow. Let's give it a color overlay of, I don't know, let's use a color that's a bit darker, something like this, so 6A, 6E, 7, 2. Click OK, click OK again. Now move these so they align to the end of the lines, or the beginning of the lines, and then just duplicate them so they match and align with the text. Okay, select this and bring it to the left a bit. Okay, and that looks pretty good. Just nudge it and get it in place. Okay, uh, next step, add the uh, social icons. And to do that, uh, I'm actually going to use um, a social icon set which I used in many projects. It's called uh, WP Zoom, and it's a free uh, set to use. So they have pretty cool icons. I'm going to grab the 16 by 16 ones. So let's grab Twitter, RSS, and Facebook. Let's see if we find the Facebook icon. There it is. So uh, grab these and just drop them in Photoshop. Okay, select them, group them, call them social. Okay, with the whole layer selected, just uh, bring it up here. And let's um, align them properly like this. Okay. Um, now, one thing I'm going to do here is make these icons black and white because I only want the color version as the mouse over version. So the regular state of the, uh, the icon is going to be black and white. So to do that, 
uh, make a simple selection like this um, that goes all around uh, the icons and with that selection go to um, layer new adjustment layer and black and white and click OK all right then uh, an easier way to do this is simply uh, go to adjustments and as you can see here add an adjustment and you can select black and white if you don't see the adjustments panel go to your window and click adjustments okay so um, that's done with the top part right here so let's go ahead and create our menu now to do that create a new group call it menu and make a selection that's 80 pixels and height so 80 pixels like this okay so menu create a new layer call it menu base and uh, fill it with any color you want either black or white it doesn't matter uh, go to double click the layer gradient overlay and add the following values the bottom value is 1f 20 23 and the top value is a slightly lighter color which is 2e 30 and 34 okay so now we have this cool little gradient for the menu and grab this and move it to the top now one one thing that I like to do is leave uh, a white gap, one pixel gap between uh, this top part and the darker menu. So just nudge this down a pixel. And you may not see it in this video, but it actually uh, is a very fine detail that uh, adds uh, just uh, a bit of sophistication to the layout. Alright then, so let's go ahead and create the menu items and let's bring up the guides. Now to bring up the guides you can simply uh, press um, command and uh, semicolon. So it's going to bring up the guides. So let's go ahead and type in some text. So we have home and the second line is a short description of that menu item. So for home, let's just say start here. Command enter to exit um, edit mode for a text. And as for line spacing, let's make it three points. Color is going to be white, except for the description part which is going to be a slightly uh, lighter gray uh, 1F, no I'm sorry, 60, 61 and 68 and the home which is the actual uh, title of the menu item it's going to be uh, 14 pixels and it's going to use color as font okay so let's grab that and align it uh, vertically with the menu base. Now with that part done, it's time we create our menu separator. And to do that, zoom in and create a small line like this. Uh, and give it the color of 3C. 3F44 and as you can see it's just a very um, thin line to separate the menu items and I'm gonna keep uh, roughly the same distance between the menu items and that that distance is 30 pixels so let me just go ahead and um, make a selection of 30 pixels here and drag some guides to mark uh, to mark that selection and that distance so 
drag this, it's going to snap to the selection. And this is exactly 30 pixels. Now, move this like this. And then repeat the same step with, um, with the separator. Okay, and the separator, let's call this sep, should be right after that guide. Okay, so uh, what I'm going to do now is duplicate this menu item and separator to create the additional menu items like this. So we have, uh, let's see what we have here, services. And the description text is what we do. And then we have gallery. Our best products. And so on. You can just keep adding menu items. Now I'm going to pause uh, the screencast so that I'll add and I'll uh, um, arrange the menu items so I, I, I won't bore you to death with, the, um, with uh, this uh, tedious part of the design. So uh, I'm just going to pause it and I'll see you guys back in just a second. Um, I just finished um, making the menu all the menu items and I've also arranged them and uh, gave them uh, the same spacing so they look uh, very good right now. Uh, okay next thing that we need to do let me just zoom in here we need to add a state for um, a mouse over menu item so to do that uh, go, uh, go into the menu group create a new layer call it menu active and grab the rectangular marquee tool, make a selection like this, uh, right up, uh, right until you hit the menu separator, and click on layer, new adjustment layer, brightness and contrast, or you can just add it from here, and give it a brightness of about 30, 30 or 40. I'm guessing somewhere in the middle, so 35. Let's zoom out here a bit, Let's see how it looks like. And that looks pretty good, so I'm gonna keep that one. So let me just hide it for now. And let's move on to the uh, slider section. Now, uh, for slider section, create a new group, call it slider. Let's make it red. Okay. Create a new layer inside that group, call it base. Now with the marquee tool again make a selection uh, that's uh, 300 pixels in height. So 300 pixels is this. Okay and for base uh, fill it with something, a color, black or white, gradient overlay, and this is gonna go from F4, F6, F8, uh, and it's gonna go to white, and that is our gradient. Now move this up, and when I'm dealing with uh, kind of subtle gradients. Uh, I always like to do one um, little thing, which is make a selection that's five pixels tall, like this, and use the brightness and contrast layer, and simply give it a brightness of about minus 20, minus 25, something like this in this case or even bigger, minus 30. Let's try it minus 29, minus 30. So grab this and drag it down here. 
So it kind of uh, creates a separator for this area and the area below. Okay, uh, with that done, it's time we create uh, our um, navigation buttons. So create a new shape by using the ellipse tool. Uh, click, hold shift and drag to create a perfect circle and create a circle that's 60 pixels by 60 like this. Okay, let's call this nav left. Uh, its background color is gonna be E1, E5, E9 like this. Let's bring up the guides again, align it to the left side and like this to align it uh, with the center of the main container. So next step is to add the arrow inside the button. Now I'm not gonna uh, draw the arrow by hand because I'm a bit lazy today so I'm gonna use the custom shape tool and select the arrow and click hold shift and drag like this. Okay, uh, arrow needs to be white and align it with um, our button. Now this needs to uh, point the other way so press command T or control T to enter free transform and then click flip horizontal and it's gonna turn the arrow like this. Now uh, I could just leave it like this but if you want to create a shape that will work on any kind of background like this for instance, uh, you'll see that uh, the, the arrow is still white and if you want to show the background behind the button uh, you, need to, you need to mask it. So to do that um, command or control and left click uh, the mask thumbnail here on the layer and then you need to do the same thing with shape 2, only this time you need to subtract the selection. So um, hold command, hold um, shift, uh, not shift, I'm sorry, alt to subtract and then left click that shape like this. And with nav left still selected, click on mask. And now we can just remove this shape right here. And now our button is going to look good no matter what background we decide to put it over, as you can see. Okay, I duplicate this one, Command T, flip horizontal to turn it, and then show the guides, align it to the right side. Okay, that's our navigation buttons. So now if we take a look at the original image, uh, you can see that I use some credit, uh, some, uh, some business card uh, renders uh, here. So I'm just going to go ahead and grab those real quick. Uh, let's see, search assets. I have it here. Now, if you're wondering how you can create these uh, cool cards. Um, you can go to Graphic River, uh, it's an item I purchased from Graphic River, I don't remember the name exactly, something, uh, business card, mock-up, template, something like that. Uh, it's very cheap and it's actually a Photoshop action, so you pop in your um, uh, back design and your front card design and it generates this cool uh, stack of uh, cards. Okay, so uh, let me just duplicate this group, merge it, and then duplicate it inside homepage screencast PSD. Close this, we don't need it. So this is our group, let's call it image, command T to enter free transform, and then just drag this. Uh, I'm using Alt and Shift and dragging um, at the same time to, um, to resize um, on both sides, on all sides actually. So resize this until it kind of fits within your slider, just a little more, something like this I'm thinking. 
press enter and then just just play around with it a little more until you get the, the right position for it so something like this I think is fine okay then uh, let's add some text and for text we have awesome business card um, design uh, this is gonna be Eller regular 14 pixels or let's try with 18 pixels actually and let's uh, borrow this color from, from the business cards okay that's, that looks good. Now let's take a look at the, the original design. I think it's a bit higher than 18 pixels. Let me try with 24 here. Yeah, I think I used 24. Sorry about that. Uh, yeah, it's 24 pixels. Okay, so let's add some uh, dummy text, some lorem ipsum. And for that, let me just open up Firefox. Grab some some uh, Latin text here, and then just um, just paste it in. Okay, and the actual color for for this is um, forty four. 45 and 49 so it's kind of a darker uh, shade of gray and this uses 14 pixel text like this so let's go ahead and um, clean this up a little bit yeah, something like this I think that looks pretty good okay uh, next thing uh, we need to add the buy button and to do that grab the round rectangle tool and make a selection that's 170 pixels wide and 40 pixels high so 170 by 40 like this and we're going to give it the same gradient as the menu so just quickly do that go to top menu click on the menu base uh, right click copy layer style and then go to our shape two here and select paste layer style. Let's call this button base, group it, call it button. And let's put in some text, buy this now. The text needs to be white, 14 pixels, or we could try 16 pixels. 16 pixels is better. Um, align it to the left. And now we need to create this, um, this kind of uh, arrow button on the right side. To do that, command and left click um, the vector mask thumbnail here to make the selection. And then with the rectangular marquee tool selected, press Alt, subtract, and then click and drag and create something like this. Okay, add an adjustment layer, brightness and contrast. Uh, bump the brightness up to about 50, I think is, uh, is the number we're looking for. 50 or 55, so something like this, 56. And zoom in a bit, select this part right here, just make a quick one pixel wide selection like this. Create a new layer. Call it separator and fill it with black. I'm just gonna uh, leave it with black since it looks pretty good as you can see. And next step, notch this a bit, next step uh, add the arrow. So select custom shape tool, click and drag the arrow like this 
and nudge it with your arrow keys and give it a color of let's see 8d so 8d 929e and that's a bit too big for my taste so let me just resize it just a bit and that looks much better okay now that's the button and let's align this with the text and now we need to add um, just an additional text here that's gonna say or find find out more the color for the text is gonna be just something like this and find out more will actually be a link so let's go ahead and borrow this blue to match my uh, my image it's gonna be underlined and the whole text is gonna be 14 pixels okay so you can either buy it now or you can uh, click this to find out more details about it okay so Actually, I'm just looking at this text right here, and it's just a bit too big for me. So I'm going to go ahead and select 14 pixels instead. And that looks just a little better. Okay, now uh, we are done with the top part, the menu, and the slider section. And um, that's pretty much it for the first hour of the tutorial. Um, and I will see you guys in part two, where uh, we're going to work on creating the actual content and um, the footer of our uh, template. So uh, thanks for watching so far. I will uh, see you guys back in part two. Thanks.